I loves me some one degree mm, of Chunky B. Now, I just have to make a comment about Chunky B. Have you ever seen him looking so good? The panel then includes actress Lady Kazan, comedian Chunky B, and Playboy TV host Julie Strain. Chunky? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> You know something, I'll tell you what. When you score an executive producer, like the one we have in the garage of love. That's all I'm I saying. I swear to God, man, I don't even. How mad was I at you all day? I know it. I right? know it. Yeah, let's, um, let's <clears throat> give me your undivided attention. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, it's me, Chunky B, in the garage of love, chunkyb.tv. Um, I'm going to tell you why it's, we're having fun tonight because uh, of Gary Adler. Right across the, uh, the table of love, give it up for Gary Adler, the executive producer of One Degree of Chunky B. That's and right, the Chunky. man each and every podcast brings his A That's game. Right. We were a dry desert before I showed up this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with my work schedule, and some of you guys have been uh, dialed in, before I talk about my work schedule, um, I'll tell you what. Give it up for Andy Davey. He's over there pushing buttons. He's not the Wizard of the Knobs, but I'll tell you what, I will Definitely let you not. rotate my knob each and every He's the moment. button pusher. He's well, we'll button figure pusher. something out right, for him. Right, right, yeah. right. Andy, thank you for being here. Can I just mention one thing? Of course. On our website, there's a photo of our new camera stand. Oh, right. Uh, courtesy of Andy Davey. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm pretty uh, proud of it. I we, and we haven't posted the interview with Boxy yet, but that's coming. That should come. Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, someone uh, got on the... Uh, on our website and said, who gives a fuck about you, your camera stand? Yeah, I know. I know. I was hurt by that. Yeah, I deleted See, that. that, 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 that <laughs> Whoever that, that is, if you're watching right now, motherfucker, don't make fun of our high yeah. tech well, equipment. Well, that was me. Oh, that was Andy. Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Boxy's sister. Yeah. 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 Hey, dude, we are just um, psyched to be in a garage of love. I do want to apologize because of our uh, our podcast schedule has been changing because it is football season and you guys know I'm over at Fox. You know I'm over at NFL shooting camera and I have never been more busy. But the most important thing is to do this podcast and that's why Adler stepped up and we've got a combination burrito of love of our next guest but we're not going to tell about it now because you know what we're going to talk about? Yes. Say hello to our favorite beer of all time. The Venice Duck. The baby. Venice mm. Duck. If you want to get your quack on you get your Venice Duck on. All right. Uh, John Henry Binder and of course Christian Warren. That's right. You guys were so proud of you and we always talk about when we talk about the Dodgers. And they we, turn the Dodgers around. That's right. The because Duck of this beer they're in first place. That's right. Love it, love it. Um, you know something. In the beginning, we used to we kind of smirked about this tongue in cheek kind of thing. But yeah. the Asta, the Asta glow. I'm telling you, each and every day, I'm. You look gorgeous. I'm Asta glowing right now. I'm telling you, people, <laughs> it's for real. And you guys, some of you. Um, people, by the way, if you want to play tennis really well yeah. in a low cut strappy thing, yes, Asta glow. You guys, and there's so many different products. <laughs> this right here, you drink a cap of this a day, you're going to lose some weight. This is going to go on your face and do good things for you. Yeah. And then there's these pills. You know something? All these pro athletes, yeah. all these pro athletes are now getting into this and, and feeling stronger, losing the weight, and still keeping that muscle that they need to, you know, yeah. like, you know, like I'm talking They're about. They're also bringing back the fanny pack. It's called the Asta Pack. You carry all this shit in there at the same time. <laughs> okay, listen, to me, people. In any not, situation, you can just. Do not believe him. All right, do me a favor, look this up. Asta Glow. Asta, A S T A Glow. I love these people. Asta Farai. Thank you, Zeph, for yeah. being so kind yeah. to us. Asta Farai. Asta Farai. All right, you guys. <laughs> so we're sitting there, we're just kicking back. We're just kicking back, thinking like we we're just going to do a talk about, you know, just the, the, the three of us, me, Adler, and uh, Andy. It was going to be that kind of night. And then Adler slips over to his new favorite barbecue joint, right? And he's sitting there chatting, and he runs into another guy that knows another guy that has, you know, you guys yeah. are a friend of a friend. Yeah. Let me cut right to the chase. This guy, I've only, I've only met him like ten minutes ago, but I've known who he is and You've what he represents. You've known him your whole life, right? Please give it up for James Martin. Yay. Hey, James Martin. Um, yeah, is welcome to the garage of love, man. 
Thank you. You are multifaceted. Mm. You've got uh, layers upon layers. You're, um, first time I heard your name, you were way back, I'm talking about like 10, 15 years ago, popping around the, uh, I hate to say small time, but you were doing stand-up comedy. Yes. And then you fell out, not fell out, but you stopped, <laughs> you stopped doing. He stopped, stopped being doing, funny. Right. <laughs> and then you went on to multiple other projects, and now you landed as a uh, part owner of like the new hot barbecue joint in Culver City. Yes, Tell I'm us an about investor. It. Yeah, I'm an investor of uh, Maple Block Meat Company on Sepulveda uh, near Venice. Shameless plug. Yeah, no, oh, no, no, that's no, what no, we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh, right. That's why no, podcasts great, exist. Great guys over there. Um, uh, my good buddy Mike Garrett got me in with Adam, his partner, and Daniel. Um, Daniel was a chef at Spago, and. Right. Uh, uh, and we all right there? Yeah, yeah. And Adam was uh, was a chef at Inc. These guys have been around. They're amazing, and they're 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 barbecue specialists, aficionados. Adam's like a master butcher. He dresses down a pig from the get go. You know, all the way down. And uh, I saw they, him yelling at one when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> what was her name? <laughs> Anybody oh, we knew? I don't want to say. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I don't want to say. <laughs> But, uh, uh, yeah, these guys, I actually, two years ago is where I met him. Uh, a buddy of mine up in the Palisades was having a Super Bowl party. Uh, my buddy up there, Abhi Lash, he has this amazing Super Bowl party every year. And he had these guys cater it. So two years ago, we went to this, you know, amazing Super Bowl party. And the food was Im- incredible. Everybody just, nobody could stop talking about it. And the brisket was just melting your mouth. And he puts it on the spit for like 12 to 14 hours. It's mm. un- You're about to have some. You're about to have. It's about, I see the bag. I didn't yeah, want to yeah, jump yeah. ahead. It's My go, mouth is watering. Oh, it's going to get good in here. Right on. But uh, uh, amazing, and uh, and and then they came back the second year, which was this last January, so Super Bowl, and uh, he said he had still had some available openings for uh, for investors to come on board. And I was like, My God, the same great brisket two years in a row. I can't wait 365 days That's for the next one. So uh, so I got on board as an investor. There's there's, there's a few guys involved, and. Uh, 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 Anyways, these guys are just killing it. It opened about a month or two ago, just started opening for dinner. It's kind of a soft opening, uh, but uh, the, the brisket, and they just had an amazing article. God, I wish I had it in front of me. I could pitch more about that. I, we're going to try to get Mike and his team. Yeah, get I these talked guys to him. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. talked to the, uh, talk Mike, more. the owner tonight, Okay, and he and the chef are going to come in. We'll yeah. do a nice, an official tasting. Perfect. So very psyched. And by the way, do you know where the bar is, Cinema? Mm-hmm. I know exactly where the Cinema yeah. bar is. I don't know if you know where that is, Chunky. <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, it's right next door. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like right in between um, uh, Washington Place and yeah. Venice Boulevard. You're right there in It's Sepulveda. a battle of smells between Tito's and Maple Block at that intersection. <laughs> oh, it's that's unbelievable. A, that's, a great, that was, that's a great location. <laughs> yeah. How, uh, how late did you guys open? Uh, I, we're open for lunch right now. I think eleven to like three thirty, and then they shut okay. down. And then they ship because it's basically market style for lunch. You go up to the counter, you order. And what's nice about it at lunch, you can order one or two ribs. You don't have to get like a half rack or a whole rack of ribs. Right. So you can kind of just sit with the butcher and tell them what you want. Shave. And then what they do is they shut down between lunch and dinner for now. Right. Uh, and then uh, uh, dinner is actually you know sit down at the table. You got a waiter comes over and, and takes care of you, and, and right they on. do it that way. So I think dinner's uh, like I'm gonna say five five thirty till you know. 10 or 10 or so what, what, in your professional opinion what's going on with barbecue i mean it is just like busting out it's what's trending but it's not going away i just see it growing and growing and growing and then do you do you like have a, a special uh style that you like like a kansas city or like a memphis what's your barbecue and what's what can we get at the block yeah well maple Blah, i'll just tell you what they're doing first off um they, they you know they they did a tour of all the barbecue play he know they know they, they know yeah. all the barbecue out there in Texas. But anyways, the article that just came out was this guy who's like the barbecue aficionado. And he said it's the best brisket in California. And, right and it on. just, it's like the place has been packed ever since this article came out because he said outside of Texas, this is one of the best barbecues there is, which is just, and he, I, I got, they'll, they'll tell you his name, but okay. uh, this guy who wrote this article, he's kind of the, you know, he's the, he's the, the professor. Yeah. And so, uh, um, so that's been a big deal for me. Uh, you know, I was born and raised in California, so I, I love barbecue. I come from ranch and folk rodeo folk, you know, if we had cattle and horses, but, but so there's a little story though. And I, and I heard Doug talking about it at the bar. I don't know if you know Doug Salkin, but um, he said that because of the emission, you know, the uh, the Clean Air Act in California right. shut down a lot of barbecue joints because they couldn't put all that smoke into the atmosphere. Oh, wow. So okay. for a while it was all dead there, but now they've figured out how to deal with everything. How to deal I also with think it. it's a backlash from the whole vegetarian vegan thing. You know what I mean? It's just those people just kind of got annoying yeah. and I'm a yeah. carnivore extraordinaire and I never stopped eating meat, you know, right. and I and I think that's what it is because it's like, hey, it's good, healthy protein. You know, and I'm um, sure there's a lot of arguments, you know, for and against it, yeah. environmental, et cetera. And I appreciate that. But, you know, I just I, I kind of like my meat. 
Now, when you had the opportunity, <laughs> nobody took advantage yeah, of that yeah, one. You know right? something that was too easy. Yeah, that's we'll, we'll that's, that's yeah. low hanging fruit, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> so but I'll tell you what. Yeah. Uh, 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 speaking of NFL, um, uh, one of my good friends uh, 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 over at NFL Network is a client, uh, Jason Troutwine. We actually took him out to. Uh, uh, we flew out. He's a big uh, Raider fan, so we went out to the Raider Kansas City game. We go see a good, good, you know, AFC, you know, uh, right. uh, 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 matchup, and uh, we flew out there to see the Raiders in Kansas City. And uh, the night before, Saturday night, we went to Arthur Bryant's oh in my Kansas God. City, South yep. Kansas City, in the hood. Best barbecue. That's I the real had. deal, right you there, can, man. You can get. Um, they had burnt ends and just thick white, just ghetto white bread. To, oh, oh, yeah. Just they French the Wonder fries, Bread, man. Just oh, it was. It was. That's the best barbecue that I had ever had. I was like, ooh, Arthur Bryant's is the real deal. And they just throw it on a big sheet of paper. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's out of control. I mean, the, the the oven that they cook it in is like I don't know. It's been there for 150 years. It's like cracked and sliding off the. You right, know, right. It's just uh, yeah. The place is a. It's just an art. You know, it's a historical uh, monument. Right, but James, I gotta ask you something. Just because you like Chinese food doesn't mean you can open a Chinese restaurant. Just because you loved barbecue, I mean, did you? Uh, what gave you the balls to invest in like? And like in that area of Culver City, untapped as far as a barbecue joint. You've got Mexican joints. You got Tito's. It's always hot. You got a couple other restaurants that have been there for years. What gave you the balls to bust out right at that particular location and busting in a barbecue? That's a great question because I mean restaurants all in all are terrible investments. I know that, but I'll tell you what. Mike Garrett is a good friend of mine, and he's opened up a number of restaurants. He's got the Midas Touch. I don't know if you've ever been to Pearl Dragon, speaking of Chinese restaurants, up in uh, the Palisades. But that place has been there for 12, 15 years. All those investors made their money back the first two years. Right. And that place is still going strong, and they pack them in there. He just really knows how to do the restaurant thing. He had Falcon on uh, Sunset for mm-hmm. years. He opened Voda in Santa Monica, 217. He's, just, he's, he's really good at what he does. And then they also uh, got together, and they were able to buy the property. And so they own the property. Uh, nice. has parking on the west side Culver City like that's unheard of so parking on the dirt uh, and then these two guys it, w- it was those two Super Bowl catering jo- it was the brisket it was the brisket oh, hey, man. am I, t- am the I wrong the guy gambled yeah. no no the brisket's it's unbelievable not, it's not even a gamble in my opinion I will say this um, we ordered the first round we ordered tonight was the fatty brisket the second round was the lean the fat and the lean is what we brought here tonight yeah I got, I mean, because you probably ate I, all the fucking I gotta fat. I got to say, the fatty's way gone, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. And it's so delicious. But the fatty's very flavorful. It's yeah, just, it's, it's like the kind yeah. of the difference between a ribeye and a filet mignon. You yeah. know, the, I, I like the ribeye. I like the marbling. I like the fat of the ribeye. It just got that flavor to it. Now that you're, uh, you know, an investor, and you could say that, you know, you, you're an owner, you could say that. No one needs to know what level. But don't you think you have to start, like, uh, researching? Like, maybe go to Memphis in May? You know that uh, barbecue festival? Sure, yeah. I that's could write the, all that off That's the big daddy. Now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's go. Road no trip. kidding. Road trip. You need an assistant. Junkie on the hey, road. Can we yeah. all ignore Doug when he comes in? Because he thinks it's going to be a surprise. Oh, really? Yeah. So when Doug comes in, just totally ignore him. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't even act like he's here. I mean it, okay? Just don't even look up, okay? All right. <laughs> Right. It'll you? be like ghosts. He'll be, <laughs> hey, should we I'm dig into that. some food? You want to yeah. dig into some food? Yeah, yeah. digging, well, guys. I'll tell you what. Do you, what what's our timing? I don't know. I'm not keeping track, but it's we're, we're going good. We're fine. All right, you want to bust it out now or you want to bust it out after it's the break? It's up to you. No, I actually, we bust it out after. You want to tease the food? Yeah, the, so people can see it's on the back end. All right. Um, and you know something? We're sitting here talking all about uh, barbecues to James Martin, but uh, we're going to talk about how we grew up. What's what's he up to now? Yeah. See if he's got the balls to go back on stage because there's rumors that the one night that I didn't host at the Scarlet Lady. Yeah, we're gonna talk more about that. But if you want to see, I know oh, you can't. Okay, here comes Doug. Yeah. So, okay, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah, we'll just keep going. Yeah. So anyway, uh, when we were there tonight, yeah, it was uh, amazing, dude. I met the met the owner. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> yeah. caveat: smoking hot chicks. All over the place. Really? All the waitresses, <laughs> awesome. the bartenders, awesome. everything was amazing. Like, really? Dude, you have no idea. <laughs> I can't do this. Hey, you can't do what? There's, some, there's, some, there's something going in the frame there. Did you, uh... I can't, All right, I can't. let's introduce Doug. Uh, Come on. <laughs> <laughs> our big, our big thing, Doug, was to him? ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't my a, idea, Doug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hi, Doug. By the way, guy on the couch tonight, <laughs> Doug Salkin. Yeah, guy. Is, can, can you see him behind guy, me? Yeah. Guy on the couch. Oh, totally. And if uh, nobody <laughs> remembers his claim to fame, his brother wrote the book scr- from scratch. Yeah, from scratch. Yeah, the about definitive the food, network. food network. Yeah, yeah. that's so, what yeah. Doug's claim to fame. But what about the beer? <laughs> the beer, right? Yeah, you have, oh, yes, he's, that's right. Ladies and he's, gentlemen, yes. Venice Duck. Help yourself to the fridge here, Doug. <laughs> They're pitching it strong, Doug. Yeah. All right, let's, hey, let's tease the food because we have our foodie here. Yeah. Okay? Our foodie just arrived. Oh, and a, oh, you guys. And a very good barbecuer uh, Oh, yes. Himself. Oh, no, Doug's got great game on the, on the barbecue. Yeah. You guys, Maple Block, here's the deals. Go to the website. Go, go to the website and... Um, you know, if you want to donate, donate because we, we, we you know, we got to get, um, we got to get Andy a sandwich now, okay? Um, and just tune in, go, um, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, hit me up at Twitter. I'm, I'm chunkyb.tv on Twitter. I need more followers. What number are you up to? Yeah, I'm yeah, only up to like 338. We were on Project <laughs> 1000, remember? I know, I've been trying to push it. I've been trying Project to push it. 1, you guys are awesome. We're going to be back with James and Adler and Andy. And guy and on the Doug couch. And a guy on the couch. The guy on the couch. The um, couch. Don't go anywhere. We're going to eat some food. This is awesome. Hey, hey you guys, Chunky B. One degree of Chunky B in the garage of love. And you know if you want to get your quack on, you go to Venice Duck. And I'm not even kidding. This is a good beer. Tell your friends, don't be afraid to get your quack on. Dude, that's actually, it's this good. is actually a really good yeah, beer. It's fucking great beer. <laughs> You're so lucky. Oh, my, oh, shit, I'm still recording. Hey, you guys, music provided by Play Up Music. That's playupmusic.com. <laughs> Hi, I'm James Martin, and you are watching and listening to One Degree of Chunky B. Okay, Stony Westmoreland just walked into the garage of love. Yeah, I'm this sorry, is I'm awesome. Sorry, you have food here? Is it <laughs> <right>? <laughs> I, sh- I smelled something. I mean, I'm no longer in the neighborhood. I'm in fucking North Hollywood. But I smelled some smoked stuff. <laughs> Stony Westmoreland just cruising by the garage. Right, but you know what? Can we invite him back for a little bit later? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. What do you okay. mean no? I got a, I got a peanut gallery. <laughs> Fuck gallon. you, Say Doug. Couch guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Elias and I will be back okay. after the tasting. I okay. I'm going to close out my little party. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry we want to hear all about it, dude. I was a contributor. What do you mean you didn't know? You got no. I said I'm sorry I didn't go. Oh, go! No, yeah. no. I'm a contributor. I know. Yeah, I did. Uh, you're the only. One. I I got my name in the credits, bitch. Well, you dude. Oh, of course. Yeah. Did you get an invite to come to the party? <laughs> oh, I probably did. Oh, yeah, I probably did. Hey, yeah. Stoney, where you up? Can you close that door behind <laughs> Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Make yourself yeah. useful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But hey, dude, come back. Roll me a fatty. Make dude, me a drink. Dude, Get the fuck first out. First of all, you're looking great. I love the new hair, dude. I, I want to no, catch. No, dude, the dude is. I was doing a. I was doing a movie for HBO. <laughs> by the way, it's, a, it's an LBJ biopic with uh, Brian Cranston playing LBJ. I got a flat top. I saw you in Congress. Congress. Yes, oh, there's a camera. Oh, there he is. Oh, you're in there. There, there, there right. it is. I can vouch right. for the yeah. flatness. I don't believe we just had like a celebrity walk by at all the garage of love. Right there. It's a little drop by. I'll go. I'll come back. Come back, Congressman. Yeah. You're staying. No. Stay. No. Then come no. with me. No. Ah. What a fucking dick. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> I just invited you. Well, it's a family. All right. Okay. James Martin, our guest, is like, what did I get myself into? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> I'm so sorry to take your time. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, nice right. white pants, by the way. I'm the youngest. <laughs> it's after Labor Day. Uh, I'm the youngest of 12. I have nine older brothers. This is a fucking cakewalk. Really? Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Thank you. Stony Westmoreland just came in. <laughs> all right. What are the Man. chances? What are the chances? That's awesome. He's coming in hot too. You can nope. tell he's he's so, so hot. He runs hot. The anyway. whirlwind. All right, check where were we? Um, all right, we're back, you guys. <laughs> we're back from intermission. <laughs> James <laughs> Martin. What the fuck was that? <laughs> it's a shit show. That's what it is. Good lord! Look at Doug's belly. Is that on camera? Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Lap dances. I apologize, people. Oh, dude, this let, me, is not, was, let me get the wide <laughs> angle on. Hold on. We were just bragging about. <laughs> we were just bragging about your uh, your executive producer uh, style. Yeah. By the and way, gonna, that was your f up there. It was. I did not have anything to do with that. That's not even an f up. No, we want him, dude. He's on fire, man. I know. He's but making let's, movies. But and let's shit. get him here at the right time. I know. It's I know. called scheduling. <laughs> he told me he was going to be here in forty five minutes, and then he showed up at the door. Yeah. Well. All right. Let's hey, everybody mm, barbecue. Yeah, barbecue. <laughs> James Martin. It's that. It's schedule. that season. 
Football season and barbecue season. Right. Yep. They go hand in hand. Okay, perfect. Um, we've got ribs. We've got brisket. We've got some sauces. Chunky, yep. you give it a try. I just yeah. ate this shit. Okay. It was delicious. Can you pass me a paper plate? Yes, sir. I and do want to try the biscuit. Serve though. it up. Doug's going in oh for seconds. God, the best. The best. Oh. Show, show the camera. Show the camera. Yeah. Always show the camera. What's that thing? What's That's that the that flaky bis- biscuit. Oh that God. there is a flaky biscuit. Make sure biscuit. Andy gets some mm-hmm. food, please. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another plate. Check Load him up. Right. He's not a seal. Load him up. Pass him around, gents. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Check it out. The buffet is officially right. open. You will need right, so, some napkins. Oh, my God. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen at home, seriously, <laughs> I am Jeez. freaking out oh, right now. On that too. that is Lord. a beautiful rib That's right there. That's a spare rib. That is a weapon oh, of mass destruction It's not just because we have extras. Yeah. Well, I was say, the biscuits are good. <laughs> yeah. That works. Okay. And that is the brisket, the lean brisket, okay, which yeah. uh, folks at okay, home, I'm recommending the fatty. To your direction. You give that over to Andy. Okay. Mm. Let's get him a plate and some get, food. Get that yeah. over to me. We got there some plates go, right there. There's a, Andy, there's a grab a little bit. Dictor on it. I can. Uh, there's plenty of napkins and there's um, sauces over yeah, here. Yeah, pass those okay, sauces. Okay, no, no. Here's there. the deal. Oh, Lordy. James, here are the okay, sauces. I'll introduce yeah. the okay, sauces. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Show you camera. Okay, there is a little cream sauce. That's right. like oh, a man. that's like a chipotle, <laughs> like maybe a spot. sriracha mayo kind of a deal. Okay. Yeah. Smells good. Right? We just got kind of classic barbecue sauce right there. Delish. A vinegar base, by the way, very nice. I dig and it. And then we have the uh, uh, Californian chimichurri. That's right. That's an Argentine of origin. Argentine. Look at you doing your homework. Of yeah. Argentine. I'm origin. a sauce guy. Doug yeah. knows. Yeah. <laughs> Gary does not lie tonight. <laughs> by the way, Doug yeah. and I are opening a restaurant that's too that. called the Barbecues. <laughs> 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 yeah, everything's. <laughs> oh, you gotta love the brisket. <laughs> okay, that's for real. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, been voted the best brisket outside of Texas. Just okay. FYI to the. But the fatty one, I imagine, right? The fatty oh, one. See, I'm I, a spare. Rib. I don't know what he tried, oh, but yeah, Lord. yeah, those ribs are crazy. How good is this, John? Oh. This, mean, look I'm, at that. Look oh, at that. Yeah, people. that's that's good. I'm no guy fieri, but fuck, that's good. Oh. Yeah, it's good eating. I'm in heaven. It's so good. Gary's eating it again. Mm. We just we just yeah. stuffed our faces. Okay. We just had a wheelbarrow full of meat and fish that? that was how posed does, as does trout. How does this taste so good? There's you guys sal- have trout tonight? Yeah, they have salmon trout. I want to try Scottish else. trout salmon. What's the white stuff? Is that horse trash? With the owner. Right. It's not horse. Did you get the white sauce? Yeah, I want, the, I want to try the white sauce. Beautiful. There, pass this over. By the way. From Texas, from Mesquite, Texas. He told me he's coming. They're coming Man, by with more I food. Know, I know you. And Doug is like a... He's, he's got game on the barbecue. He's impressed. So for him to be impressed, you know it's good shit. The fatty is as good as the barbecue you get in Lockhart. Wow. That, say, that, say that again in the, in the microphone. Yeah, Let's the get that. The barbecue is as good as you get in Lockhart, Texas. All right. That's saying something. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Oh, I wow. like it, Doug. Wow. I'm liking it a lot. I love the fact that you've got your standard, hardcore, beautiful barbecue but your sauce is jazzed up a little bit for like a little West Coast love. Right. Doesn't even need it either. But I'll tell you what, the, the, what these guys are doing is they're going and finding uh, peach wood and they're bringing down cords of peach wood from as far as like Lancaster. And they're, really? they're stacking cords of peach wood in that, uh, uh, in that parking lot. And they got a great smoker that uh, uh, you, got the, you got the tour, didn't you? Yeah. Wow. Come on, That's Doug. awesome. This is so. Sure, got a cool plate. tour. <laughs> <laughs> the, <bar. laughs> oh, really oh, the best part is just hearing it. It sounds like a porno with all the mm. smacking. Oh, and man. Sh- no, well, so what's, what's the white? What's the white sauce we're looking at? That's a cream sauce. It's, it's a cream, cream sauce. sauce. Secret so secret it? ingredients. Oh, yeah, yeah sriracha it's, and mayonnaise. <laughs> it's not. You know what? He actually in his barbecue sauces there's no ketchup no mayonnaise he doesn't he doesn't cheat man he, he listen there might be he's a puritan <laughs> might cats be up. no cats up don't say that word <laughs> that's not okay uh, when you bite it and, and it rips off the bone like that mm-hmm. you see that right there people yeah that's hey, your listen, sign and they're perfectly if done if the folks at home want to uh find this place online maybe take a look what is it mapleblock.com how maple block meat company just do a google search it'll come up on Sepulveda Boulevard in Culver City between yeah, Washington Place and Venice yeah, Boulevard. I did mention that. Boom, Boom. next to hours. the next to the cinema bar. Endless. Oh, oh, yeah. Near around the corner from the cozy cozy yeah. inn. Mhm. Mm-hmm. What are the hours? Look at that people. Off the bone. Regular, regular. Off the bone. My whole crew over at NFL Network walked over and we actually uh, right oh, after really? they opened, yeah, and I treated them to lunch over there. They awesome. were thumbs up. Thumbs up. Right Jason on. who was at uh, Arthur Bryant's with me. Gave it a thumbs up. So it's walking distance from NFL Network. Yep. Yep. 
which is that's nice. awesome. That is so awesome. So you that got that going for you, dude. So your hands are so full. You're juggling. You got a lot of moving parts. He's man. a Renaissance man. I found out today he plays polo. I don't sit still very well. Yeah. What are your hobbies, man? What are you doing? Place what I do? I'm a surfer, number one. That's really where you know I see Gary and really? his boys I in the water. I didn't, I didn't see it. You don't look like one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. see it either. California, born and raised. I, my family actually when you came see him here. in the water, you really don't see it. Oh, that's the really? problem. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm gonna start filming you. Don't make me pull Michael Riggins' pictures of you out. Ah. Uh. Did you know, Riggins? Yeah, uh, you know what? That's embarrassing. So that. That that's cool. embarrassing. No, my family came here in 1857. Covered wagons. My mom's family. Wow. If I was any more Californian, I'd be Mexican. <laughs> yeah. Now he's the chef at Maple Block. <laughs> Great grandpappy Jimmy. <laughs> I have no business in that kitchen. <laughs> Doug could pull it up. Doug, you're the uh, quite the barbecue man. Doug's yeah, okay. that's what they're saying. They're pitching you. Pretty damn good. Yeah. yeah. They're pitching you. So James, I heard you're getting back into comedy. I've been doing stand up a little bit. Yeah. I you know I did stand up for 15 years. Uh, started up in Northern California. Uh, I started out with Brian Posehn, uh, a good buddy of mine back then, and we I mean he kept going and blew up, and you know he's tight with Pat Oswalt and all this. You know I used to, and then I moved down to San Francisco, and Pat Oswalt and Brian Posehn were roommates, and uh, God, I, we would just sit in the kitchen and just listen to Pat and go off. For yeah. hours, like just, I mean, coughing up blood, laughing, just spitting up lungs. It was just that guy is just so goddamn funny. Just na- he, he was almost, re- I almost wanted to quit comedy because I was like, I'll never be that funny. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, those guys are amazing. And, and they've always been so kind to me all throughout the years. And, and uh, you know, when I moved to L.A., uh, I had made a little short film that I wrote, produced and directed. and got in some film festivals uh, called Animals. It was actually, it was actually a, a dig at my brother who was a vegetarian. But... Uh, uh, <laughs> Patton was really like cool. Patton's like, hey, yeah, can I check it out? So I gave him a copy of it. You know, it was over at Largo one night. He was uh, performing over there. Those guys used to always perform. Sarah Silverman, Greg Barrett, uh, Mark no, no. Marin. Actually, t- two of my kind of my feathers in my cap when I was doing comedy before. Um, one of them was getting complimented by Mark Marin. Uh, he came off the uh, the stage of the San Francisco Punchline. I was working there, and he's like, hey, yeah, you got the really really funny bit. And I was like, man, because nobody really knew him back then. He wasn't it wasn't huge, and uh, but I loved his stand up. And so to get a compliment from him back then. And that was a big deal and, and nobody knew who he was and then I worked at uh, UC Davis uh, did a college gig which are always great uh, with Mitch Hedberg his headlining and I opened for Mitch Hedberg and that was like I came off stage wow. and he was like hey we, we talked about some of my bits and he thought it was really, and I was like oh my god Mitch Hedberg thought I was funny like that was those, right were, those two things in my comedy career and then I opened for Al Jarreau once which what? was pretty cool oh, guys yeah. hilarious Natural. <laughs> <laughs> not that funny no but uh, i opened for al Jarreau one time which is tough when mostly you're doing improv it, yeah. <laughs> a lot of callbacks <laughs> when you're doing when you're opening for musical acts it's tough but i still oh, yeah. i did well I, did, I had a good set and uh you know they dug me and then i opened uh, the other one was my big credit was the marshall tucker band oh How nice that? awesome. that's my yeah. karaoke go-to yeah. right there marshall nice. tucker band which song can't you see? Oh, yeah. Of course, dude. <laughs> it's a gem. Yeah. And the ladies dress you with their eyes. I'm telling you, man. But you know, um, Beth Lapidus used to do a show at the Lago, right? Well, actually, uh, it was, I think it was Lisa Langan was booking that with Flanagan. I and, used to uh, do a, I, a black show there. It was all black comp comedians. And Ed Largo? For some reason. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You're black on the inside. Yeah. They needed someone to bomb. November 4th. <laughs> we're, back up in the, we're back and running up at the Scarlet Lady. Nice. We did a Good. hiatus because they wanted some shit going on Saturday night. So we're back November 4th. You want to get up? Yeah, I'd love to. All Thank right. you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just, w- I was actually, uh, Shannon, there's a, that's a maple block meat burp right there. That was delicious. <laughs> Savor it, ladies that and gentlemen. That burp brought to you by Maple Block Meat Company. <laughs> Turn on your smell of vision. Venice Duck. Oh, you need some more? Look at Andy. Turn on your yeah. smell of vision. That's oh, the international symbol I, I, for I, please I, pass I me the meat. That's a thumbs you. up. Yeah, yeah when he does this. That's well, James, up. what if people wanted to see you or anything that you're doing? Can they? Uh, how can they get involved in uh, your life? Yeah, uh, can they hit you up they? on Twitter. Or yeah, 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 Facebook, uh, James Martin Swigert, uh, and that's the, the whole last name. That's a whole other story. But uh, we've been Swigert. Swigert is my last right, name. Here and we it's, go. It's <laughs> do we want to even go down this road? Man, no, not really. <laughs> no, let's not go down this road. <laughs> okay, we don't need it. <laughs> so it's a long story. Yeah. My name is spelled Andy. so bad. We have to turn his mic right. off because nobody can nobody can spell my last name. And so when I started doing stand up again, yeah. uh, uh, you know, w- w- my Jewish friends are like, no one's ever going to hire. You know, the Jews here are never going to hire a German with a Kraut name like that. And you look right. as Aryan as could be. So I look right. like Hitler's offspring. So it's like I'm never working in this town anyway. 
But uh, the Swiger name is nobody can spell it. And somebody said to me, it was a valid, it was a valid point. They said, "Hey, if somebody wants to look you up on YouTube, nobody can spell your name. Everybody wants to put A's in there because of Jimmy Swagger at the Reverend. Sure. And then there's Jack Swagger at the Rastronaut. So I was just like, you know, just keep it simple. Go with my middle name, James Martin. And so uh, that's easier. So if people want to find me, uh, James Martin is the first search on you know Facebook. I'm on Perfect. Twitter, Instagram, all those goodies. Now, do you have a gig coming up anytime in October, or should we just go ahead and celebrate November 4th, your uh, comeback? November 4th, Scarlet Lady. Yep. Everybody come down to that <laughs> Everybody's show. Everybody's going to be there, man. I'm, uh, no, I just did Brennan's the other night, which is fun. It's a working room. You know, you get up there. Shannon McClendon's a good kid. He's running that show pretty good over there. He's gets, actually got some really good – there are some funny people there Monday. You know, the audience yeah. is, is kind of the, the post, you know, Monday Night Football guys drooling in their beers at the bar and, and oh, no, a couple no, no, of no, comics. No, but, no, the Scarlet Lady's brutal sometimes. Yeah, no, I, it, was it was brutal the night I was there. In fact, I think – Everybody said it was the worst night ever there. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was horrible. Yeah. 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 But yeah. fun, like in a weird, fun, horrible way. I left <laughs> I left with an eye patch. People somebody threw a cue ball at me. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, all right. No, so, so, but I am, I'm going to be doing a show at the Improv. Uh, a good friend of mine, Mike Uriga, he does a show called Bay Hilaria. So they bring a lot of the comics from the Bay Area okay. uh, uh, down, and, and, and they do shows. And uh, they just had Jim Short, and uh, you know, uh, they had a bunch of great, uh, great comics come Everyone's over. Everyone's named Jim. Everyone's name is Jim. It's mandatory. It's weird. <laughs> <Yeah. man. laughs> So but you, you uh, get yeah. that, uh, you're surfing every day? Uh, yeah, I surf. I surf a lot, man. I just I love surfing, and uh, you know, being a California boy, I just uh, born. I'm not a fan of the gym. You know, I just hate yeah. going to the gym. Running just looks like I'd rather put. But like, he loves the, the name my, gym. I love oh, <laughs> gymnasium. The weirdest like, people. Gary would like to work out at the gym. <laughs> no, never. Yeah. No, you but here's the I, thing, man. If it wasn't James for surfing, is a good surfer. If thank you, Gary. If it wasn't for surfing, I'd weigh 500 pounds because I eat like a drunk teenager. Right on. I do. <laughs> I just, I, I like. I mean, Tito's tacos. I am not afraid. <laughs> the guy, like, <laughs> just like. That. <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. Are you good a Tito's times. fan? I love Tito's, man. No, I, you, you know, I wasn't. That. I wasn't a fan at the beginning when I first got to LA uh, 20 some years ago. A buddy of mine swore by it, and I was like, eh, I don't know. I go to El Abajeno, one of my favorite right. uh, Mexican Mexican restaurants. Uh, but then one day I just went by there and I just went, ah, oh, these crunchy tacos with cheese. And then if you get the, if they get, I don't know if you've had the chili con carne. Just chunks of meat in the sauce, and you really? dip it with the with the chip and the salsa. Yeah. Oh, get out of here! Sunday afternoon, you will see me in line there, bake it in the sun, grab my little grub, go home. Football, Tito's tacos. Oh, awesome! Huh. It's the best. Where are you there. living these days? I live here in the marina. I got a loft in the marina, and Sweet. close to you. Guys. We're all we're all like a stone's throw from here, yeah. which is kind of fun. Which is why we can kind of stay out late for <laughs> exactly guys like <laughs> us. <laughs> but uh, no, I've lived I've lived on the west side since I moved here. I actually lived in Venice on Seventh uh, and Westminster back in the day when it yeah. was the hood. And, uh, you know, the only place on, uh, you know, Howl's was the only place on Abbott Kinney. I mean, the Brig was a shithole. Yep. And, it was a uh, great shithole. It sawdust good. on the floor. Glen yep. Crest Barbecue. Right. They had soul food there. Yeah. Uh, you now had some other cheese Abbott's Habit barbecue. opened up. They started selling coffee, and then they started selling pizza, and then there was that little Mexican place on the mm-hmm. corner. But, you know, it's just gone through. And I remember, this is really funny. I actually, when I moved down here, uh, I had been dating a girl in Northern California. And, and uh, I said, why don't you come down? You know, so she's got a cheap ticket on Southwest. She comes down. She spends the night. Well, the ghetto bird had been going back and forth because the Culver city boys were fighting against the v13 in venice there was a gang war going on so every other night it was a drive-by in each other so anyways uh so the first night she's there she's like i don't know about la it's kind of a big scary place and sure enough the first night the helicopters overhead right. go out front there's a guy shot literally on the sidewalk right in front of our door and she's like no, honey, she's like no big deal she's like you know moving her flight up she was on standby the next morning gone never yeah. saw her again <laughs> What's wrong? Nice. <laughs> I, mean, I used to live on Abikenny before it was Abikenny. I was living yeah, in it was West Washington. Washington. West Washington. West Washington. Yeah. West Washington. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, that's. Uh, but I came from Northern California from, you know, cowboy people. My parents used to rodeo. Really? Yeah. My mom was a barrel racer. My dad was a calf roper and stuff. I, I, came, I was brought home from the hospital to this little ranch house with a red barn and white corrals and horses. And uh, they used to actually find me. Like I, I was like three or four years old, and what I'd do is I'd go out to the corral and I'd grab the fresh grass that the horses couldn't reach with their mouths and their necks through the you know on the other side right. of the fence, and I'd hold the grass. The horse would come up and, and eat it out of my hand. I'd climb up the corral fence and jump on the horse, and the horse would just start walking away and walk around the corral with me, no, just holding onto the mane. And they'd awesome. come out. They'd come out, and I was just like cowboy at four, <laughs> bareback like, yeah. at four, but <laughs> just bronc riding. <laughs> That's crazy, <laughs> bronc riding as a kid. No, you got a big family. Yeah, I'm the youngest of uh, twelve kids. Ten boys and two girls. Mormon? Uh, Catholic. 
Oh. Yeah. yeah, I came out of the womb swinging though because I had the brothers thing. It's tough, man. The Shit baby. rolls downhill. That's crazy. Well, and you know, it's funny. People think I'm the spoiled. They're like, "Oh, you're the baby. You're the spoiled." One. Nah, the girls were the spoiled ones. Yeah, no, you the got girls your ass spoiled. kicked on a regular basis. Yeah, and they just forgot. Like, but when you have twelve, they just forget about you. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was five years old, and we got. You know, this is back in the day when you'd pack a station wagon full of kids and just head to Disneyland, right? And uh, I got—I was five years old. I got left at a gas station in Turlock. Nice. And they really? <laughs> they, they oh, just you know kept driving. It's that, a, not kind of a nice. Story. It's not a bad. You know, like Turlock. <laughs> that's where they have the Turlock inbreeding festival. No, I think. they've got great gas stations yeah, it's there. Gorgeous there. Great Quiznos. But the there. sad thing was they didn't even notice that there was a kid missing. Like the the, the toothless right. Home gas Alone. station yeah. attendant, he had it's to like call the CHP, <laughs> had to dispatch a car to pull over the station wagon full of kids and drunk parents. And two years later, they came back. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta go back and get that one. Yeah, yeah no, you got you can't get them on the way back from Disneyland. You gotta go yeah. get them today. Yeah. What's in your future, James? What, what, what do you got coming down the pike? Uh, what do I? I got coming. I, I'm working on a. I'm working on a film. I've been working on a documentary about a skateboard crew from Northern California called the End Men. They were actually uh, formed in 1975. They were this this crew of kids that got together and they became these just hardcore empty pool skaters. And uh, it was kind of an. They were. They all know the Z Boys, right? The whole right. Dogtown scene. They, Stacy and 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 uh, Alva. They all know those guys. And uh, but these guys started skating pools in 1975. And uh, they never stopped. And so I got into skateboarding and I'd go to the skateboard park and I'd see these guys who were just ripping, coming out of the bowls and just, and this is in 77, 78. Right. And I'm like, where did these guys learn how to do this? Like, who are these guys? And they were the end men. And they were, they, 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 they say it's, the northern men because they were the z boys and we're like we're men up here and so oh, it was you. a little bit of a rivalry thing but it was but it was all all in jest because they all they all knew one another and uh the difference was um you know uh, i i, I kind of went into the dark side I went down to the bay area and was doing punk shows and stuff and i just kind of vanished and became more of a surfer and uh you know years later i was like god i wonder if any of those guys are still alive because they would take us to punk shows they were hardcore and they would just they'd charge skateboard downhill slaloms ripping skateboarders and uh so with the advent of like facebook and stuff in about mid 2000s 2005 i was like god i wonder if any of those guys are even still alive you know, right. and so I go on Facebook and boom, Randy Caton, he's kind of the our, you know, the sunny barger of the end man, you know, and I, he pops up and he's skateboarding in Montana. And he's like, he's like in his 50s, like mid, mid to late 50s. And he's busted an air out of a pool. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and so I really and I'm dig deeper. And I'm like, these guys, not only are they still alive, which is amazing that they survived all the drugs and the punk rock and, the, and, right. and just the hardcore skating. These guys have never stopped skating pools. And it turns out my old roommate, Gary Cross, he ended up becoming a uh, uh, world champion downhill slalom skateboarder. Don Bostic, who was the guy who ran the little skateboard shop where we buy all of our gear, he ends up, he's a guy who uh, did all the early X Games skateboarding events. He ran all, now he runs the Triple Crown of Skateboarding. They do events all over the world. Wow. And it's just unbelievable. And like uh, uh, all these guys, like uh, uh, Dwayne Peters, who is like old hardcore punk rock skater, he became one of the end men. He actually came up and lived up there for a while. And so like, Steve Caballero and all these all these big names came out of it and uh, so I was like this is amazing and these guys are in their 50s and 60s now there's a guy 67 years old broke his collarbone hitting the coping on a pool <laughs> So the, the difference thing is, is the Dogtown scene was great. I, you know, I worked with Stacey Peralta on the, on the Hawaiian, the, Eddie, the legend of Eddie Aikau documentary. And it was great. And we, I told him, I was like, I, God, I really want to do a documentary about these guys. He's like, I think that's a great idea. It's, a, it's, it's one of the most important uh, uh, parts of skateboarding history that hasn't been told. Because the Dogtown guys were kind of, you know, Alva was going, they, they loved the fame and the fortune, right? The limelight. But the end man were really secretive about their pools. They didn't want anybody knowing. These guys would go, they would hitch a ride uh, on the civilian air patrol and they'd fly over Sacramento looking for kidney-shaped pools, the right kind of pool. And then they'd stake them out and they had them mapped out. These guys worked so hard at skating pools. It was incredible. They had jumpsuits made that said uh, end men pool service since 1975. And when, when like a, a house with one of these kidney-shaped pools would, would get, like the people would go on vacation, they'd see the newspapers pile up out front. Right? right, and so what they do is they grab the newspapers, hide them, sure. jump, jump the fence with these jumpsuits. They would bring these industrial pumps out and like pump twelve thousand gallons of water out of a pool in like seven hours. Clean it, skate it until the sheriffs came and chased them out, or You're the people kidding. came. No, the most hardcore pool skaters you've ever met. Could you imagine coming home from vacation and your pool's empty? 
and 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 like and filled with a bunch of punk rock skateboarders <laughs> like just in a keg like these guys are hardcore and um uh mike chantry you know uh, uh um, tommy guerrero like these are names like in the skateboarding world eric dressen who was like a big skateboarder in the 90s um these guys have all gone up there even tony alva went up and skated with them at their big end man party yeah. and tony's agreed to be uh, do an interview for the uh, for the documentary um i've got amazing oh, really? yeah i've got amazing well you tell tony yeah. i got a bone to pick with him all right <laughs> because i'm like tony listen up I've got this podcast. Yeah. And your boys have been on it. We had... Um, we had Skip Ingram on it. Yeah, we yeah, had yeah. Skip on yeah. it. And I'm like, listen, it's a small time little podcast in the garage of love. Will you be... Well, you know, you've got to go through my manager. And I think he thought it was like a, a show. Yeah. Like a, like a like real TV show. Something people actually watch. Hey, you're the executive... What Don't. the fuck? Don't say small time. This isn't small time. This is the garage of love, man. Yeah, see? That's go. what we're talking Think about. Big, Think big, baby. Think big. Listen to me. I want to say thank you, one, for being an awesome person, two, for bringing the barbecue, sharing your story. We still have a lot of shit to talk about, and, and we're going to, you know, of course, have you back and uh, even talk about a whole other subject that I will enjoy talking to you about. Perfect. We'll tease it at that. All right. That sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for you bringing the grub, and thank you for being so awesome. Uh, across the table... We got Gary Adler, who just keeps on giving. Yeah, just that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you scored a big one tonight, man. Thank you, you scored, Chucky B. You scored a big one. Um, and, of course, Andy. We got dessert there. coming in next. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is him. Um, you guys, go to the website. I need some more. Uh, tweet me. Make me, you know, because people are like, oh, you only got like oh, 300 and something. I'm trying to get, you know, just one. I'll talk to you later about it. You guys, once again. <laughs> Ask the glow. Ask the glow. Venice just, Duck. Don't cheat yourself. Go with the Venice Duck. Get your quack on. Um, my name is Chunky B, and I really, really dig you. Thank you for being part Hit of the, the Maple Garage Block. Up. Hit up the Maple Block. Go. Let's get this last rib going. All right. All right. Awesome. Eat up. James Martin. Thanks, guys. Thank you.